Hello. Um, hey, don't laugh lah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, so why am I doing it today? If you don't know me, my name is Lionel and I run a production house called Minto Studios. So recently, uh, my crew and uh, my team has been asking me a lot of questions about the business. From ins and outs of it, to photography, to videography, to directing, to a whole chunk of things around uh, what I do. So I thought, why not we answer some of these questions through a series of videos and put it out there for you guys to listen. Hopefully some, someone out there will be listening as well. And it could be useful for, you know, not just for my team, but also for the aspiring creatives, photographers, videographers out there who may want to start their own creative studio as well. And the first question is a pretty big one. And the question is, how did we build Windows Studios into a six-figure production house, which it is today? To answer this question, we need to go way back. In my previous life, I used to be in an events and marketing agency. I was there for about eight and a half years. How long has it been? About 10 to 11 years ago since I started. And uh, that was my first job. It wasn't an easy job, right? It was tough. It was long hours. We had seven days a week at times and you have 14 hour work days. So it's insanely stressful also. I, I literally had mini anxiety attacks when I hurt my ringtone. It's like when I hurt my ringtone, I, my body went like, you know, like, like I really flinched when I heard my ringtone. But if I wanted to move on in my life, if I wanted to do something, I knew I had to move on. But I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do yet. Hey, but then again, I learned a lot, right? So I, I give, I regret nothing. It was the, it was a great years. I met a lot of FNS people, both my own team as well as clients as well. So I met a lot of people there, and it, and it came back later. So the network that I built there did help later. Other than the stress at work that was affecting me, it also inevitably affected my family as well. Obviously, I didn't see my parents a lot. My then girlfriend and then wife also was like, don't see me a lot. So you know, it affects you know your own personal life as well, being such involved in your work, right? You come home late and things like that. So finally, the one that kind of pushed me over to know that I really got to make the move is my mom passed. So when my mom passed, it was sort of like an epiphany moment. Uh, I said, okay, right, now it's time to do something about it, you know, to move on to the next step in your life. So what did I do is like, you know, my passion was photography and, and I've been shooting since I was in school, since my dad bought me my, his, my first Nikon D70. So when I, he bought it for me and Polly, and I just never looked back, right? So just photography, photography all the way and thought, yeah, so why not just take this on and go freelance, right? Just start small, try something out, just go on my own. At least I know I made a move. So I made the final decision. I went to my then director, I said, hey, uh, you know, it's been eight, great eight years and I thought, you know, it's time for me to move. I'm going to do freelance photography. Uh, after about a week, so we kind of had a coffee session again. He was like, hey, why not instead of you going freelance, why not do this together? Like, like, a, like a joint venture, so to speak. He would incubate me for about a year and then we will see how it goes from there. Any freelance photographer who out there who just started will know that this is obviously an opportunity you, it's very difficult to pass by, right? So obviously I said, yes, right? So what's the harm? Just give it a try. With that, 2019, February, we moved to a new place and Minto Studios was born. And so it was a good time. We had a big opening and just in that same period that we opened up shop and then I started to announce everyone who started a new company. My wife also gave me good news that we had a kid coming. So that was a good time. So when my wife told me she was pregnant, it went from shock to joy and happiness to then uh, sudden concern and worry about, oh no, I just threw a lot of money into the business and I, now I have a kid coming along. Uh, but, you know, it's like at the same time, I was like, hmm, okay, it means that there's no turning back now, right? And, it, and overall, I think it was still good. So it was pressurizing, but, you know, it's a good pressure, I think. It kind of helped as well. But when you start, I'm sure if you ask any old school photographer out there, they'll say the same thing is that when you first start, you kind of got to do everything, you know, whether it be it from weddings and family photos to product shoots, to portraits, to yeah, anything to do with photography, you kind of come choose. Whatever it came by, you just did it, right? So with the support of my business partner at the time who was running an events company, I've been helping to develop quite a lot of event shoots as well as shooting, you know, products for his clients and things like that. So it kind of a good start. It's good that I had a partner and I would say good to have a partner in the business. So naturally, after doing some photography, you know, the natural thing for people to ask was can you do video as well? So I mean, I secretly did want to become a filmmaker and a director in future. So I was like, why not, right? Just, just do it and uh, took the camera and started doing video for my clients as well. 
you know. Um, and it was fortunate that through some of the projects, I was able to travel to uh, Maldives. I was able to travel to Sydney and New South Wales to shoot some videos as well. So it was a good, it was a good journey, right? So, but you, you had to be adaptable to learn and whatever the client wants, you got to try and see if you could do it. Do it, right? Again, the priority was just making money. But it came to a point where I knew that uh, I couldn't do the videos alone. And Minto Studios had to get better at videography work. So that's when I started to look out for uh, my first hire. So I actually hired my first video guy. Uh, of course, you could work with freelancers, but I just came to a point where I think it just made sense to hire. But guess what happened? The next thing that happened was COVID, right? Everybody knows what happened. Uh, so under COVID, events all went away. We literally had no more event jobs. Things were really bad. And by this time, COVID hit, my kid was already born, was already a couple months old. Uh, yeah, so things were pretty dire at that time. Right, so, um, but I was lucky, right? I was lucky that, you know, I kept in contact with my network, my business network, and some of them were really supportive of me. Uh, we had good relationships and they tried their best to give me jobs as well. So, we, I even had a client where uh, they sent the food to my house, to where I was staying, and then we shot the food there. So they packed it food, we shot the food, they paid us for the job, and we got to eat the food at the same time. Right, but again, those were very few and far between, and obviously it's not really sustainable in, in the long run. Uh, with that said, you know, the first few months was really tough, as a circuit breaker, but COVID is a double-edged sword. So while COVID was stressful, it also opened very big doors for us. Really big doors, I must say. So we had projects like Singapore Festival uh, that we did for two years during this entire COVID period. And that was one very milestone project for us. We had some big corporate shoots that we did for some of our clients and Everybody knows with COVID, live streaming became really hot. So we were forced to learn live streaming as well. Thankfully, I hired uh, somebody because he could really uh, get into the live streaming while I still run the business. And then suddenly, uh, we could do small little live stream projects as well, right? But these small little live stream projects were also important because that opened us again to more clients. We managed to do Lego projects. We managed to do Guardian Pharmacy. You know, we managed to do, uh, again, brands that we wouldn't have been able to do if had COVID not happened, right? With these opportunities, we were then able to build a bigger team. Uh, now I have, other than my videographer Lukman, I now have uh, Zing, who is my assistant producer. Dylan, who is my second photographer, who is really great at productions. And then I also have uh, Gail, who is my editor, as well as a team of interns, which I have constantly, which are also very important to our team. So yes, yeah, so we have a team of about, usually about seven at any time. On top of that, with the success we had during COVID, uh, we were also able to build a bigger studio space. So now we have a full-fledged kitchen, we have a cyclorama space, we have two living space areas for, you know, whether you want a chill out space or you want a talk show. Minto Studios uh, is able to also work with different production houses, with other photographers, with other creatives, with other clients, to have our, to use our space to create and uh, more content for themselves, uh, for others. So Minto Studios has become a, a great place for creation as well. Whether we us or whether we others, uh, which is what we want. We want to do collaborations, we want to work with others as well. With that said, with the space for creation, what's next for Minto Studios? What do we want to do and do next? Is we want to make Minto Studios not just a place for creation, but also a place for learning and for sharing. You know, with, with so many creators coming through our place and what we've learned over the couple of years that we've been around as well, uh, we have things that we would love to share, right? So if, if you know if you guys have questions, if you guys have things you want to ask us, whether be it in terms of creation, uh, photography, videography, filmmaking, or running a rental studio like this, you know if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Let us know, uh, and you know it, maybe we could even create another video like this to answer those questions. Uh, hopefully that will be uh, helpful for you guys, right? So hopefully in this format or in other formats we were able to uh, share more with everyone. And in a nutshell, that was how Minter Studios became what it is today. So again, drop the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. Bye.